reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. When they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, they had a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there heard, and it was said that it thundered. Others said it was an angel that had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not for mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Here ends the reading. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. It was Passover and the streets of Jerusalem were thronging. The majority that had flocked there had been Jews, but there would have been some who were proselytes, foreigners, spiritual seekers like these Greeks who wanted to join the Jews as they worshipped their God. But there was more than the festival that was intriguing these people. They had heard of miracles and wonders performed by this new Jewish teacher, Jesus, and now they'd arrived in the city, they heard of even more strange happenings. Could it be true that a short time ago Jesus had actually raised somebody from the dead? Perhaps this same spirit of adventure and curiosity that had led these Greeks to the festival to worship a foreign god also led them to look for Jesus. They were on a faith journey. First their spiritual exploration took them to Jerusalem. Then they sought out Philip, who they had heard knew Jesus. Then Philip went to Andrew and together Philip and Andrew went to Jesus and told them about the Greeks. Notice that they didn't go directly to Jesus. People often don't go to straight to him now any more than they did then, because it is a journey. Most believers encountered many Christians on that path to making a commitment of their own. They had help as they sought the Lord. And if you are a believer, you have a duty to take others to him that come to you seeking Jesus. People in whose hearts is that same longing. They want to see Jesus. So how did Jesus respond to hearing of these Greeks' desire to see him? He responds by speaking of his own death. To him, these foreigners being drawn to him was a sign that his hour had come. The purpose of his death, he tells us, was to draw all people to himself. All people. That's you and I included. And the Greeks were just the beginning. But how can this be? How can dying on a cross draw all people to Jesus? The people of his day didn't understand. They had the wrong idea about the Messiah. They imagined he would come like a victorious warrior, not like a criminal condemned to suffering a humiliating and painful death. Today is no different. Many people still have the wrong idea about God. Some expect God to make everything okay and take away all their troubles. Some desire a God who prevents all the bad things you hear about in the news. Some will only trust in God if he intervenes against all the cruelty, the harm, the hardship, the evil, the illness, the pain that exists in the world. 
God does intervene, by the way, but he doesn't necessarily take those things away. How can God exist, people ask, given all the suffering in the world? I'm sure you've heard that said. Well, he would be letting us down if his purpose was to save us from any pain, poverty or pandemic. But it is not. We live on earth and not in heaven. And suffering is part of the reality of life. Jesus said that he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. It's in John's Gospel, chapter 10. If we didn't experience the whole of life, the good and the bad, we would not be having it abundantly. We would only be having part of the experience of life. I don't know why the world is the way that it is, but I do know that God has the power to transform suffering when it comes along. He can and does heal. He can and does comfort. He can and does take suffering away, sometimes. But even when he doesn't do those things, even then, he can bring good out of it. He can bring blessings out of it. Important things are born out of it. Without suffering, how can we show compassion? Without suffering, how can we experience empathy? Without suffering, how do we learn courage? Without suffering, how can we become strong? Dare I suggest that unless we experience suffering, unless we encounter pain, we cannot truly begin to know or experience our God. I have learned that God can do powerful things through suffering, things that can be achieved in no other way. I don't understand it, but his son Jesus came for that hour. He came to suffer for us. He didn't shy away from that because salvation would not be achieved in any other way. I do not understand why Jesus did what he did for us. I do not understand why we matter to him that much, but we do. All of that happened because he wants to draw us to himself. All of that happened because God wants to be in a new, redeemed relationship with us, a father for his children. That's love for you. I don't understand because God's ways are not our ways. Our King, our God, is unfathomable. We want to put our kings on a throne in a palace. The Israelites wanted to put God on a throne in the temple. God wanted his throne to be on a cross, a cross with a sign attached which read, Jesus, the King of the Jews, as they crucified him. In God's kingship, his royal robes were a source of mockery. His scepter was a reed. His crown was of thorns and his throne was a cross. And on his left and his right were not princes, but criminals. Jesus knew suffering and he accepted it because he knew what would be achieved through it, a sacrifice given once for all people and all time. And he prayed, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. What about this hour that we are now in, this strange hour of COVID-19 pandemic? Should we pray that the world be saved from the situation we now find ourselves in? Well, yes, of course we should. But we should also ask, why have we come to this hour? What is God saying to us? What is he wanting to bring to our attention in these days? What is he doing through this? What does he require of us? Jesus died to draw all people to himself. It is through suffering he draws all people to himself. At this time of suffering, is he drawing you to himself? A good thing about having to do this online, there aren't many good things, but one good thing is hopefully we are reaching people outside of our church family who don't usually join us in our worship services, who don't yet know the Lord, people who are spiritually curious and seeking something that their souls are longing for. If that is you, I speak to you now. 
Coming to faith in Christ is an exciting adventure that will change you and lead you on unexpected paths. The Greeks in our reading were curious and they were embarking on that exciting adventure too. They were bold and curious enough to go to one of his followers because they wanted to see Jesus. Do you have a desire to see him too? If so, come and join us in this exciting adventure because we too want to see Jesus. He wants you to, to draw you to himself because he loves you. He loves you enough to die for you. He is a king willing to be enthroned on a cross because he wants to come alongside you in your good times and your bad times. And as creator of the world that we live in, as king above all kings, as Lord above all lords, he can do for you what no doctor, no scientist, no politician, no world leader can do. So know your need for him at this time. Turn to him, for only he is the one who saves. He is the one who comforts and heals. He is the one that can bring you peace. Amen.